conceited. I got a reason. I'm conceited. I got a reason. I'm conceited. I got a reason. Hey, 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 it is your girl Abby, aka New Age Coach here, and I am lighting the way for those on their way to the light. Ever since we're little, you know, we're taught to treat others the way that we would want to be treated, to be kind, to be patient, to have compassion. But we really don't ever learn to show ourselves that same respect, that same kindness, that same compassion to ourselves. How many of you can actually relate to negative self-talk, talk, for example? You know, when you make a mistake saying, oh my God, I'm an idiot, or I'm so dumb, or why did I do that? Or, you know, my goodness, I suck, or I failed, you know, these types of statements. And how many times do you catch yourself comparing yourself against other people? How much money they make, huh? how successful they are, how beautiful or rich or how much in love they are. And then just feel like you're not on that same level or you're not measuring up or where you're supposed to be in that regard. And it's these thoughts as subconscious or accidental as they might be that are actually creating more and more of these negative internal feelings or experiences that are validating the beliefs for ourselves. And once we can learn to really shift our mindset, to really look inwards and to really just be grateful and to be easy on ourselves, that is where all the magic happens. Everyone knows the airplane analogy, right? Where you are um, getting ready, you're buckled in, the flight's about to take off and the flight attendant gives you the safety measures and they always say that you need to put on your own oxygen mask before you can help anyone else. Well, it's the same rule when it comes to self-love, which is the concept of this video. I opened up this video with a little metaphor that I wanted to explain now. The glasses in the beginning of the clip, those represented me. And the water that was pouring into that, that represents self-love. And this, this glass was me before my spiritual awakening. You know the saying is the glass half empty or half full? <laughs> This glass, me, before my spiritual awakening, it, it wasn't even half empty. It, it was just empty, depleted, gone. And now after my spiritual awakening, this is my cup, you know? I am filling this cup to more and more every single day until it will runneth over and keep flowing. Another way of saying I'm conceited is saying I'm full of myself. And just like this glass is filled to the top, you know, that is exactly the way to be. Hell yes, I mean, this is the whole point of self-love. We all have to fill ourselves up. We all have to pour attention and effort and energy and action and most importantly, love into our own beings before we can genuinely and authentically share it out. So yes, I'm conceited. I am full of myself. And my reason? Because I have learned to love myself through this journey and I am loving myself more than I have ever loved myself in my life. And I'm continuing to learn to do this more and more every day. And you know what? You should love yourself too. Self-love is so important to being happy and being fulfilled and just living well. It influences everything. It influences who you pick for a partner, uh, the image you project at work, how you cope with the problems in your life. It's at the epicenter. And self-love, it's not just simply a state of feeling good. It's really a state of appreciation for yourself. And it grows from action. I repeat, self-love grows from action. When you intentionally and purposefully do things that are going to support your physical, your mental, your spiritual and emotional health. So if you're unsure of what actions that you can start to take to expand your own self-love, then continue on to the rest of this video where you'll learn six ways that will quite literally have you saying how much you love yourself too. So number one is use affirmations and affirmations are positive statements that can help you challenge and overcome self-sabotaging beliefs and just negative thoughts overall 
and when you repeat them often and you really truly believe in them, um, you really can start to make positive changes. And affirmations have been absolutely instrumental on my own journey. And some of you might laugh at this or if you decide to try it, which that would be awesome. You might feel silly at first when, you, when you're doing it, but push through that uncomfortableness because this practice will truly make you smile from the inside out. And I try to do this um, when I wake up in the morning and right before I go to bed. And I simply look into the mirror and say this. I love you, I love you, I love you. I am amazing, I am powerful, I am beautiful, I am awesome, I am funny, I am so valuable, I am grateful, I love you, I love you, I love you. Another way to explore uh, expanding your self-love, which has been instrumental again on my journey, is to explore your spirituality. Faith is at the foundation of self-love. These two things, they go hand in hand. And it doesn't matter what you believe in or what religion you are part of or grew up in. That doesn't matter. That's not the point. Believe in something, anything. And it's that believing that truly does open up your heart to the beauty of trusting, right? It helps build your intuition and it helps you make decisions based on that gut feeling or what you're what your heart feels is right. And when you start to explore this side of you, you know, it's going to take you on this journey to learn so many new things about yourself, new thoughts, new feelings, new raw emotions. And it's these things that are going to make you truly appreciate yourself and love yourself for being authentically you. You really have to know the real you to be able to love the real you. This, this third tip here, it might be a little bit more obvious to some, but it is to practice good self-care. You will love yourself more undoubtedly when you take better care of your basic needs. You know, obviously this is in regards to logistics like making those medical appointments for check-ins and eating healthy and exercising and drinking plenty of water. But self-care for me also means doing the things that yourself actually cares about. <laughs> So take that lunch break at work, even if you don't think you have the time or read that book that you've had on your shelf for five years, even if it means sentence by sentence, page by page over the next three months. Buy yourself something new and feel good about yourself when you're wearing it. Book that massage or that facial that you've been dreaming about forever. You deserve it and you're absolutely worth it. This next one has been a really big learning curve for me on this journey, but I'm getting better and better at it as time goes by here. And it really is help expanding my own love and appreciation for myself. And that is learning to set boundaries. If you're always the person that someone calls when they need a favor or the type of person where people will tell you their entire life story and talk, 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 but they take no real interest in learning about yours or if you're around people who are just constantly negative and just miserable, you know, start setting limits and start creating space and boundaries. It's okay to decline their phone call, to cut back on the time you spend with them, to tell them no. When you set these boundaries and you say, and you say no to activities and people that exhaust you, You'll start loving yourself even more because you can take back all that energy that they suck out of you and invest it back into you. Through the self-love and spiritual journey, I've learned that time on this earth is limited. I mean, I've always known that, but it's just become ever so clear and true that time is truly limited here. Life is short here, man, and I value my time here, and I wanna use it wisely and do the things that make me happy with the people who genuinely make me happy because otherwise it is not worth it. All right, we are on number five, which is to live intentionally and to live on purpose. You'll accept and love yourself more whatever is happening in your life when you live with purpose and you live with design. And you don't even need to know what your actual life purpose is. That's not what I'm saying. But if your intention is to live in a meaningful way, in a fulfilling way, in a healthy way, then you're gonna make decisions that support this intention. And you're gonna feel good about yourself when you succeed in that purpose, right? 
And one way I have been living on purpose lately and showing myself some love is by taking intentional time out of my day to take walks in nature. And on these walks, I am present. I am mindful. I am listening to the birds chirping and I'm feeling the wind blow tickling my skin and I'm feeling the warm sunshine shine down on my face and I'm connecting with people who are walking by with a smile and eye contact and a quick hello, acknowledging their presence, which validates mine. And this feeling of connectivity to nature, to people, but most importantly to me, this feeling of connectivity has been life-changing when it comes to self-love. This one action of taking walks for me intentionally and wanting to live this way on purpose, it's translated into other areas of my life in the most positive of ways as well. It just simply makes me feel amazing. And when you start feeling amazing, it's just so much easier to appreciate yourself and to thank yourself for creating these wonderful experiences. Another example of me living intentionally and on purpose to support this self-love journey is that I purposely didn't put on makeup for this video. I know that sounds silly, right? And sometimes I purposely don't wear makeup for a few days or a week or, you know, on the weekends. And it's because I care enough and to be learning to care enough about myself to not only let my skin breathe and take a break, but because I'm learning to be comfortable with me from the inside out, to be vulnerable, to not always have to cover up these pieces of me that I am not so proud of or secure with, to let people see me and let people see my imperfections. And I'm, I'm saying this literally and figuratively. And in this, you start to see that the people who love and care about you, they don't stop doing that because you're not wearing makeup, for example, or trying to be perfect or put together all the time. They love the real you. And that makes it even more easy to keep being the real, raw, true you. And it, it helps you to love this version of you even more. I have saved the best for last when it comes to building self-love. And the lesson I have learned so far is number six, let that shit go, man. We can't stop thinking about what that coworker said to us and how rude it was, or we can't believe this person did this to us or that to us. And we're constantly holding on to things in our past and it can tend to weigh very heavy on our souls and even affect our self-esteem and give us low self-esteem. But in situations like these, when we're trapped in this kind of victim mode or just trapped in our minds, it's like we're letting people live rent-free inside of our head. And while sometimes we do this as kind of a protective mechanism, you know, a way to defend ourselves and to protect ourselves from hurting, it really is only just holding us back from moving forward to reaching that optimal place of self-acceptance and just loving who we are. And the more that we learn to clear these energetic blocks and to let that shit go, the more room that we make internally to allow self-love to replace all that negativity. And personally, I know that there are a few things, you know, right now in my life that I need to let go of. And one way that I plan on helping myself do this is creating some time to clean out my closets. Cleansing my mind can sometimes work in the form of letting go of clothes or shoes or jewelry or whatever it is, you know, things that no longer serve me. But I can also donate, you know, and help others, which is always great. But for me, cleaning out closets and things like this, it's pretty cathartic. And physically getting rid of old things represent me making room for new things to come into my life. Getting rid of clothes, for example, remind me that I've changed, that I've grown. Some of these items are no longer my style. They no longer reflect my personality or who I am now. And they simply just don't fit me anymore. And it's just simply, it's a reminder not to chase what's already happened. Like I said, love yourself enough to know that the best is yet to come and we need to make room for that best to come to come in easily. Through actions that show us that we're truly taking care of ourselves and making the effort to love ourselves, we become aligned with our own powerful and unique spirit. 
And it's only from this place of self-love and alignment that we can completely and authentically give and receive real love. This is because when, when we truly love ourselves, when our own cup is full, right? We know that we can give without becoming resentful or exhausted or depleted. And we know we can receive love because we know we deserve it. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I loved talking about self-love with you. And even if you're not in a place right now uh, of self-love, I hope this video will help you take some steps to get you there. You might not be loving yourself fully quite yet, but please take peace in knowing that you are still loved. See you next Sunday.